is Nixonian in concept. It was 1981. Tom Kane and Jim Florio were in the middle of a heated race for governor. It was the closest race in state history, but many remember it today as the race that was tainted by allegations of voter intimidation in communities like Newark, Trenton, and Camden. The so-called National Ballot Security Task Force, later found to be associated with the Republican National Committee, was behind the placement of these signs, warning against voter fraud and offering a $1,000 reward for tips. A 1982 federal consent decree barred the RNC from engaging in any further ballot security programs. That decree expired in 2016. I've just received a call from Secretary Clinton. Even after winning the election, the president alleged rampant voter fraud without any evidence, and this year is again calling for his supporters to turn up at the polls as poll watchers. Is that not some type of profiling? Come on. That's, that's voter intimidation crystal clear. Assemblywoman Verlina Reynolds-Jackson is sponsoring a bill that would prohibit police officers from serving as poll workers. It would also block police departments from posting officers at polling places and would keep police in or out of uniform from being within 100 feet of a polling place. This is a civilian election. It's supposed to be about civility and you casting your vote in terms of what your beliefs are. And so there shouldn't be um, police involved or law enforcement involved at all. But the, you know, when you think about a gun, people are fearful. When you think about um, you know, law enforcement, they're there to protect and serve. But why is that only in certain communities that this is um, um, prevalent? Jesse Burns of the League of Women Voters in New Jersey says placing police or any kind of uniformed poll watchers at election sites can only serve as intimidation. It does not lead to any additional security. New Jersey allows you know, for uh, challengers to be in the, in the polling places, allows for challengers to, to watch the count. And um, this is a partisan activity usually, but um, there's a lot of security built into our election system already. Poll watchers and challengers are interchangeable terms. In New Jersey, we mostly call them challengers, and they are allowed by law, one per candidate, to spend the day in the polling place. Their job, as the name implies, is to challenge voters. But as Mike Harper of the Hudson County Board of Elections explains, the scope of those challenges is limited. That challenge has to be based on a challenger's individually held knowledge. The most common two challenges is that person no longer doesn't live there anymore, or that's not who they claim to be. They can't compare signatures or look at the person's voting record in any way. Mostly, they keep track of the turnout of potential voters for their candidate. In actuality, says Harper, challenges are pretty rare, and excessive challenges get flagged. If in any four-hour period someone challenges more than three, four, five people, I want them, a, a poll workers trained, call us, let me get an investigator or deputy there, down there to watch that, because that could turn over into that gamesmanship you're talking about of not rightfully using the challenges, more trying to slow down that district. That's less of a problem this year also, since much of the state will be voting by mail. Across the country, though, our hodgepodge of election laws can make voting more difficult to accomplish, especially in an election year where one campaign has tried to convince voters that the process is the problem. For NJ Spotlight News, I'm David Cruz.